and um, I'm going to take it through professional ethics. This is our separate tutorial, and so I hope it's going to be a very short one. But I want to give you time to go and prepare for the exams. So the session is being recorded for the benefit of others. So from, from the last time, we, we, we defined what professional ethics, professionalism is. So I'm, I'm well aware we are uh, this. Then we defined what ethics is. So time. So, so from we we have to, we know what ethics is. We've defined it and we explained it. From ethics, we moved to morals. We know what morals are and we explained a bit on morals. Uh, then from there, we went to the law. If something is said to be lawful and uh, e illegal, so to speak. And over and above that, we explained what morals are, the difference between morals and ethics. And we gave the examples of something that's immoral but ethical, and something that's unethical, immoral. Um, those words are going to be confusing. You so bear with me. Bandaged, illegal, immoral, or unmoral, or unethical, unethical. So bear with me. Um, from there, we we discussed that phrase with men with when perfected is the best of animals, but when separated from the law and justice is the worst of them all. We try to explain, uh, everyone try to give their point of view. So uh, when, when we're doing professional ethics, uh, let me just try and make it. Um, it's not so much to do uh, the right or wrong, but it's, it's, it's got a, more to do with how you explain um, how you defend your position and how the, the facts that you state now have got a bearing on, 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 on the answer that you get. So when, whenever you get a question like that, some people would go, would support that, that hypothesis which was brought by, by Aristotle and some would be against it. So depending on the facts that you provide, and those are the marks that you'll be getting. So uh, it's, it's, it's all up to you. Uh, I would want you, I would urge you to at least think outside the box when you're probably answering these questions. And from when we, what we said before, when you're tackling most of these questions, you need to relate them in terms of professionalism, ethics, morals, and law. So when you get a question, put the, the, the legal point of view, then you put the moral point of view, then from there you put the ethical point of view. If there's a professional point of view, you also include that. So the, okay, that's a, an exam tip right there. So when you're dealing with some of these, these questions, you get more marks by explaining it in such a way. You, you get more marks if you explain giving facts. Rather than what Lee was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you waffle, you you're not being concise, so you won't get um, as many marks as, as as you want. Then from there, we try we explained that table where we're saying uh, common misconduct. We we try to explain the difference between misuse of company time and uh, stealing. So if you notice, you when you when you do one form of misconduct, you might end up having to do uh, commit rather more 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 things that are not permitted of you. So we defined misconduct. Mr. David, you do you still understand what misconduct is? Yes, sir. 
what is this contract what is this contract Then what? That's a chargeable offense depending on the company's code of conduct. Chargeable. Then what? Misconduct is an um, <clears throat> uh, improper behavior displayed by an employee. That is conduct, and it yes. Now we, you know, you, you know why I'm asking, and it. The times when you are in an exam, and it, it's easier to say something that you are, that you understand rather than try and memorize something. So if you understand. It becomes easy for you when you're now tackling some of these questions. So I'm asking, what is the conduct of honor? We say misconduct is is going is putting um, offenses that go against the code of conduct. Now I'm asking, now what is the code of conduct? Code of conduct. I think uh, code of code of conduct. It is that um, which has been put by the company for the employers to perform in a certain manner. Okay. Um, okay. Let, okay. So let, let me let me take you back a bit. Um, it says more and ethics. They generally. Ethics is behavior conforming to a general acceptable, something that you deem normal. So moral, uh, they vary from age, cultural group, ethnic background, religion, and life experience, and all those things. We have examples. So, by virtue of people coming from different backgrounds, they've got different perspectives when it comes to ethics and morals. So, when you put a code of conduct, you now underline. <coughs> Guys, uh, misuse of company resources is not allowed. Abusive behavior is not allowed. Uh, conflict of interest, you can't do conflict, conflict of interest. Stealing and falsifying time and hours on, on, on working hours. And it. So for someone, and it, let's say I come late, I can simply call a colleague, to my, my guy, can you hook me up, uh, log me in, for for from an ethical point of view you might say that's unethical but to someone you'd say no so i'm doing someone a favor so by 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 virtue of this we, we need now to separate the company in what what is allowed in terms of the company so the code of conduct is a document which is drafted by the company management or council or depending on, on mm -hmm. the nature of the organization. It's crafted to, mm -hmm. to explicitly uh, highlight the things which are permitted and which things that are not permitted. This is done so that when you break those things, you are you are you are charged. Charged, you could get um, forms of charged forms of charges. You could get uh, probably dismissal, or maybe three months without pay, or or some of something like that. Or you could get a verbal warning. Some organizations it's two verbal warnings, then one written warning, then second written warning, then there's a third and final written warning. Then after that third and final written warning, it's it's a dismissal. That is if you continue to do the same offense. So, so when you're tackling some of these, and conflict of interest is one of the um, last time we explained what conflict of interest is. 
can conflict of interest can someone give an example of conflict of interest conflict of interest an example just one example of conflict of interest I will quote uh, the one one person who, who presented last time when I was talking about uh, we say we're working you are an IT personnel, then uh, you find yourself uh, behaving a company that deals with IT things where mm -hmm. that's where conflict comes from. Whenever we have got, yeah, in, in basically conflict of, conflict of interest, you are having many responses, responses, social responsibilities that are conflicting okay that's 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 correct that's correct because what what, what we're saying is and your your core business and your let's say extracurricular let me give you another example let's say um i work at a company and i i buy I sell, let's say, an example is computers. I've got a side job where I sell computers. That if I get a customer, there's a conflict of interest because I can have, I can take that customer and supply those computers on them. Or I can have the company supply those computers. So that's another form of conflict, for you, conflict of interest. Another source is um, the company, let's say, Builds computers from scratch, and I, I, I have a company. I work there, and I have a company that uh, manufactures and sells hard drives. So when the computer wants, when the company wants to buy hard drives, they they get quotations and they and they, and they send my quotation. So if I'm the one who's in charge of buying those things. Uh, there will be a conflict of, conflict of interest because I, I'm interested. I stand to gain by giving, awarding myself that contract. But at the same time, I need to have a fair, a fair environment to to acquire this contract. So that's another form of conflict of interest. Uh, let's see which one amongst this is uh, lying to outside stakeholders. Can someone give an example of lying to outside stakeholders? Let's hear from someone who hasn't said anything. Lee, you haven't said anything. You Lee, lying to outside stakeholders. Hi, sorry, yes. Diana Buddha. What was the question? Lying to outside stakeholders. Lying to outside stakeholders. How is that uh, you are lying about the products or you are giving them false information about uh, what you offer? Yes. The question is, how is that a form of misconduct? All right. Uh, because when you are an employee, uh, you should uh, never give false information. Uh, whether you are trying to get uh, new clients, you should sell what you have. So always try to uh, not uh, misrepresent the company. Okay, you brought another term, um, mis misrepresentation. What is misrepresentation? I gave you the, that as an assignment. Huh? Uh, yes. Was it misrepresentation? Yes. Oh. Investment and representation. Yeah, when you misrepresent, um, I think uh, uh, you like uh, I can uh, misrepresent my uh, information uh, about uh, my career. I can uh, add a little bit of a lie to my career that I have been working in an IT sector for 20 years. I've been doing this. I have these skills. So I'm misrepresenting myself. So when we talk of an organization, maybe you're saying that um, my organization uh, uh, has actually um, uh, uh, accomplished ABC, maybe you have installed or you have um, 
uh, my software is Amakaisa for big banks. You are actually, what can I say? You are making the organization look big. Maybe it's uh, not that big. Uh, let me give you, let me give you a, 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 um, does anyone like cars? Monofara Munas Bunazia Mota, you guys. Tinot Zida. Right. Um, there's a company in Dubai which claims they've got a super hyper car which does zero to 100 in 2.1 seconds. Mm. Mm. I mean, mm. it takes one, two, you didn't get home 100 k's per hour. That possible? And it, so, so it, no one is ever is no one ever saw the car actually doing zero to hundred in two point one seconds. So when investigations started uh, happening, but you know we've never seen this car, and the car doesn't look aerodynamic enough to put those kind of speed. And when the owner was asked any the type of uh, engine and everything, he was mainly focusing more on the beauty. And so he that is a form of misrepresentation whereby you're falsifying information to outside customers because you 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 know they want such cars that that do zero to hundred in two point one seconds. So that's a, a, an example of of of, of, of uh, misrepresentation. So when I'm asking for examples, I would want something Chekuti people can relate to. Another example, we we know the guys with gaming laptop. There's a company which does um, 3D desks where you have a desk which is like I can't say mobile because it's not moving, but um, when you're playing a game, when you're driving a car, when you turn, the desk actually turns. When when you hit your brakes, it gives you the feel of of the car stopping. But now, these guys went on to say the desk will vibrate when you hit when you hit a car on your left. It vibrates on your left. It does what it's supposed to do. But those guys, they falsified information to try and sell that desk, which didn't do what it was meant to do. So in, in, a, in a way, that's a way of misrepresentation. So when you're giving examples, don't, don't be shy to give details or even company names. All right, so um, appropriate, inappropriate social networking. How would you explain inappropriate social networking? Uh, let's hear from someone who hasn't said anything. Um, Chama, welcome. Uh, th thank you, sir. Uh, it's unfortunate. I'm from another scenario. My wife just said an accident, so I'm just trying to catch up with you here. Um, uh, so is, is she okay? Yeah, she, she does she have some small injuries. So I just left here at the hospital being attended to by the doctors. Okay. Um, yes. all right. I just thought maybe I should not miss here, also try and balance up things. No, no, we, we, we are recording this, so I, I'm sure you can attend to the wife. Yeah, you no, that's okay. Want, you don't want to... We're humans after all. Yes, I understand. So, so that ex exams around the corner, everything has to be balanced. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I hope, I hope. You have to be there for your wife. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> all right, uh, I hope she is. gets uh, better soon. Yeah. So, so, so look, look at the situation that just happened right now. He is morally ob obliged to go and see his wife, but he decided to come uh, for a tutorial, which is work related. If you're to if you're to characterize that in a form of morals and ethics, how would you fit the situation? Because at the end of the day, 
we this is exactly what we're trying to teach each other. If 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 it, it also depends on let's say Baza, it also depends on the nature of your organization, number one. It also depends on the leadership style that your manager or the supervisor employs. So if you if you look at it, you, you can get different situations and scenarios on, 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 on certain, certain things. But Mr. Chama, it's, I hope your wife gets both. Sorry. But, I hope your wife gets well soon. Yeah, 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 she'll be okay. She'll be okay. That's fine. So um, a well-implemented ethical and compliance program and strong ethical culture uh, leads to less pressure on employees to misbehave. We, we tried to explain, we explained this in our previous, on a previous tutorial, whereby we're saying for, for prevention is better than cure. When you've got a, a strong code of conduct which is uh well known it it hinders uh misbehaving okay. so when we say prevention is better than cure we, we mean it's it's better to have an awareness program rather than a very strong disciplinary committee so those are some of the things that you probably need to, to consider when you're coming up with your with your code of conduct and your compliance uh appointing a compliance officer we, we, we talked about that last time then we say the code of conduct is the statement that highlights an organization's key ethical issues you 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 know claiming this definition anyone can but explaining and understanding it that's where the uh, that's where the trick is so i want us to have this, to understand what it does rather than to claim such that at the end of the day, when you go to work, Monoti, ah, check it, ethics and professionalism, professional ethics, now Mr. Marufu, this we are not permitted to do. Um, moving on. So, uh, like I said before, I, 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 want us to, I want this to be a sh very short tutorial. Uh, we said common approaches to decision-making, virtue, utilitarian, fairness approach, common good, we we talked about this. This is uh, this is this managers in making decisions, and um, you chance most of the cases you barely find one of these uh, approaches in stand alone. You have a, a how can I put it a blend of two. You have got a blend of the two. Fairness is saying needs to be fair. We don't care who you are. We're not going to be. Fair, fair. We're not give you benefit, fair, or we're not giving you benefit of doubt. If you break the law, you you are you are liable to its um, full extent. Virtue is saying uh, the community can actually take into consideration whether you did good in your misconduct. So. This one, this one way you can approach when you check based on other maybe decisions. Do you just say, "Come on, uh, if, is is taking someone is an example? We know Libya. There was a detector. Anzan, the guy who was executed. Anzan, what? Mama Gaddafi. Yes, 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 yes. He was a so-called detector. But if if you liars with or read, you discover that do you know in Libya there was a point in time where if you are if you've got a degree and you're unemployed, you'd get an allowance, which is minimum wage. If you're married, if you get married, there will be a house that will be set for you. If there's a money, very high profit when it, when you're selling the own you get an, an allowance. Everyone in the country get an allowance. Libya, if I'm not mistaken, has got one of the largest irrigation schemes. So, 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 despite the fact that he was deemed a dictator, there were some things that he did which were good, and most of those things benefited the local. So that you see the, the aspect of, of, of 
ethics. You might be doing something that unethical by maybe infringing in human rights. You, in human rights, but the common good approach would say would say would claim that despite the fact that he's doing this, are we in a position of um if we send this guy away, do we stand to benefit more or we benefit less? So that's more you can read widely on those on that aspect. Um prof relationship, um professional, these are some of the uh, aspects of the association as society that you would you you um be in contact with. You would be in contact with the society, uh, employers, clients, suppliers, other professionals and IT users. So they have um their own way they of they would affect in a manner that would affect how you make decisions. So you, I'm sure it's there in Last time we talked about whistleblowing, so I don't want to talk about whistleblowing. We touched on conflict of interest. We talked on bribes and gifts. Um, Lee gave us a definition on, she tried to explain misrepresentation. So this was your assignment in terms of CV. So you were to now you need to, you need to know the difference between um, embellishment and misrepresentation. Um, malpractice. Did we talk? About, I'm sure we didn't talk about malpractice. Negligence is to be defined. It's not to do something that is unreasonable. This is why a code of conduct is important. When you are being taken to task on an on alleged offense, and that offense is not all documented, you can win the case. If your company does not have a code of conduct which states that you are on, you are you need to come to work between eight and four, and you come to work at twelve, they cannot hold you account hold you accountable because it's not clearly stated. So that's where the code of conduct is important. It, it goes hand in hand with professional malpractice. And remember, there are certain governing boards like the Computer Society of Zimbabwe that, uh, that have got their own code of conduct now a certain profession or a certain profession is supposed to, to, to handle or take off themselves. An example would be you are the CEO of a company like, let me give you a big company, like Econ. There are certain standards of living or standards that the society holds you to. Last time we gave an example. Seeing me drinking super might it might raise raise the eyebrows, but it's not much of a big thing. But seeing strife must see you are drinking super in public. See, it raises it raises um eyebrows what's what's going on because that is not morally acceptable in society for someone you've got a certain high standards that you need to protect as a profession uh let's move on uh inappropriate sharing of information privacy and inappropriate use of resources how are these three connected and how can you distinguish between one from the other. That's for the floor. Welcome, Mr. Pearson. The question is, we've got inappropriate sharing of information, we've got privacy, and we've got inappropriate use of computer sources. How can we distinguish between the two and how are these three intertwined? It's for the floor, guys. Hello, guys. We know what privacy is. We know what inappropriate sharing of information. Is. We know what inappropriate. Is. So I'm just. I just want you to to connect the three 
and separate the three. Distinguish one from the other while it's giving us a link between the two. Okay. Privacy. What is privacy? Is is anyone guys we we did security? What is privacy? All right. When we say a device is secure, what do we mean? Yeah, it is free from any attack. Any attack. Yes. All right. So what we say a device is not is, is vulnerable. What now do we mean? Vulnerability and guys, super privacy. It is, it is something that is exposed to to any attack. That is, that is that thing is vulnerable. Uh, yes. Okay, let me give you a, a live example. If you leave your house, your, your car unlocked, your car is vulnerable. There's a there's a security aspect which is which can be exploited by an, an intruder or an attack. But doesn't mean that it's, it's going to be attacked. Correct. Remember, there is availability, accessibility, and what? For security. Are you guys doing security? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's an availability. For something to be safe, it needs to be available. Guys, okay. what does security mean? What does security mean? I think security it just means the putting all necessary precautions to protect a device or property or product. Right. That's that's now that's okay. But I was hoping for security in terms of the triple A's accountability, author authentication, authorization. Accountability is available can be availability. Okay. There's availability, there's authentication and there's authorization. So so for for for, for something to be to be somewhat secure, it, there, it, there needs to be accountability of, 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 of a certain thing, of a resource or whatever it is. It, that thing needs to be available. If there's authorization, it will be there. That's a system where we say that, 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 that three A's of, of security. I'm not, I'm not just looking We did that, sir. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. So, so, per privacy, and it, in terms of the A is the security, which one are we tackling for privacy? Is it authentication? Is it availability? Is it accountability? It's authorization. These things. Three. 
Is it not authorization? Authorization. So we're saying if so, we only give information to people who are authorized. But remember, look at it this way. For someone who is authorized for them to gain access to that information, they have to be authenticated. Yes. And, it, and when they are authenticated, that information needs to be available. Correct. So we privacy is got more security aspects in it. And it, we are not agreeing. Yes. Oh, that's fine. How about appropriate sharing of resources? Okay. Why, why, why I'm asking it is you're supposed to be thinking outside the box. There is privacy. I've got my 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 document. That, let, let me give you an example. I've got my, a lot of people consider CVs is, 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 is private document. So they, uh, that document, there has to be a lot of privacy. On it. There are very few people who are supposed to see that. Document. I only give uh, access to someone, my, or I will only give access to someone who I feel is either close or can benefit me when I'm giving when I'm being given a job or something. So if I give you my CV, can that be inappropriate sharing of information? Or is it inappropriate or appropriate? If it's appropriate, you need to, like I said before, there's no right or wrong answers. You need to justify yourself. Explain why you think giving, sharing of information is appropriate. It goes down to our three things that we are we agreed from the get go, from professionalism, ethics, morals, and the law. So, if giving those four, sharing my CV with someone, is that ethical? Is that morally acceptable? Is that professional or is that legal? Remember the instances where something could be unethical and yet illegal. Same applies. Inappropriate use of computer sources. resources a company. Is that ethical? Is that moral acceptable? Is that professional? Or is that um, illegal? If your code of conduct does not clearly state that it's not permitted to abuse company resources in such a manner, you are more than you can do it, but does not mean it's ethical or professional. So these are some of the dynamics that you probably need to 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 play around with when you're tackling some of these. Uh, compliance. We talked about compliance before. Um, means to, to be in accordance with established policies, guidelines, specifications, or legislation. Legislation is simply means is it legal? Is it what law, what, what legal framework are you using? So when, when, you, when that thing is um, compliance officers, and it, normally they, it's got a lot to do with either audit, forensic audit, when you're doing it in IT, you need uh, a security audit who does more compliance, with compliance. So that, that's, that's mainly it. Uh, which brings me to something that is very, we talked about security. Let's hear it from the panel. What's that might, um, what's that might mean the security? Chris, we, we guys know Maui. Oh, Yamuno Fariraka, viruses, worms, everything. So and now I want detail from you guys. Security threats. Denial of service. DOS. Yes. Okay. How does a denial of service attack? 
Is it a denial of service attack or a distributed denial of service? It's distributed denial. So how how can we can we can it fit into our um prof, profession ethical profession professional ethics? Sorry. So how does uh, denial of service now affect professional ethics? Because remember, the right. process, uh, we, we we talked about um, uh, those uh, triple A's that we're talking about, right? The denial, the distributed denial of service, it occurs when a, a, a network is actually flooded with uh, with responses. Then it render that that particular that was with the website, it becomes an available. So. Ethically, when, whenever I need to access something, I will have that information should be available, like what we said. But with this denial of service, I will be actually not getting what I want at that particular time. The service will be not available. So ethically, maybe that's how I see it. Okay, it is that service. Yes. You won't be getting what you are supposed to be getting when you want to. So regardless of whether you educate yourself to prove that you are, you still will not be able to get sales. Yes. And that's all right. Other, 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 other security concerns, guys. We've got denial service. Yes. We have uh, financial fraud. Yes. Okay. Can you explain? Uh, this is whereby when someone steals uh, another person's credit card and uses it to purchase uh, some goods online, so it's an ethical for that person to even steal that credit card because he's not authorized or she's not authorized to use that card. That, that, that's, that's credit card fraud, huh? Yeah. Yes, under financial fraud. So, so we we had financial fraud, fraud. Is it fraud or fraud? Fraud. Oh, uh, it it depends on how you pronounce it. Financial fraud, and gave an example of credit card fraud, whereby you either clone the credit card or you social engineer. Um, someone and steal their card so that you can guess their, um, their PIN number and just steal their money. There is social engineering and you know what social engineering is, uh, social profiling. Guys. Yes. Have a on Facebook, but it's state your favorite color. And you guys, basically, my mama, you know, color is blue. State your favorite. The, those guys will be trying to social engineer someone. <laughs> you 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 profile someone. You discover what they like. Uh, for an example, we discovered, let's say, Mr. David likes likes cars. For example. Uh, so if you know the person's birthday or the their firstborn, their wife's name or, or their mother's name. You can guess, or the house number, you can guess passwords and more, or my pet name, or my nicknames, or what. So when you're profiling, I'll, I'll, I'll be lurking on, on person Grant's uh, account, finding out what he enjoys doing, what he likes, then the kind of person that he is. From there, I'm, 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 I'm capable of guessing or brute forcing my passwords so that I can gain access to either your bank account or your. Your, your your social media account. So it's, it's it's possible. It has happened to a lot of people. A lot of people fell victim to it. They just don't don't know what it, it's happening. So when, when when you're dealing with security, you there's there is nothing that is hundred percent secure. The only way you can secure a piece of information, let's say it's on your hard drive, is if you plug that hard drive off your computer. Put it in a safe. Put that safe in a truckload of concrete. Let that concrete uh, solidify. 
put that thing uh, on the bottom of the ocean, the deepest point, point of the ocean, and place it there. And that thing will still not be 100% 100% safe. So when, when it comes to security, there's a lot of things that are involved. Uh, there's a paper which was written where they're saying the weakest point of any system are the users. Correct. Agree? Correct. And, um, users are too vulnerable. And the guy when I bow our dark or disclosures or passwords, well, you find someone you trust, you you can you tell them, ah, system you do, you know that so you know that so you know that so so so. Humans are susceptible to social injuries, social attacks. They, you don't even know you're being profiled. A good example of profiling, Macaona, what's it called? Fantastic. Um, what is this movie called? Yakai Tuanariana, where she was a hacker, and those guys rob banks and whatnot, whatnot. What's it called? You guys, you know the movie. Ah. I'm not a movie fan. Ah, yeah, guys. This is one of what's it called? Uh, the first one again, Nana Brad Pitt, Nana. What's that movie called? It, it, it used to be a gentleman's movie. Then Vakadzi uh, Vakat, no, we want this also. So they, they, they made a movie. Nana, I think there's Julia Roberts there also, Nariana. And Rihanna is a hacker. And she. She she does a sort of profiling in the movie, and it's spot on the way she did it. The person liked dogs, and then the, um, she went and created an ad where you get something free for dogs. And when the person clicks the dog, when the person clicks that link, they gained access to all the password that person had. So I watched the movie. What's it called? I can't remember the name, but. Uh, I now now recall what you are saying. What, what's that movie called? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me try to check my archives if I can see. Oceans, Oceans Eleven, Oceans Movie. The latest one I get whenever cards. Rihanna was there. So if you watch the Rihanna clip and you see what how social profiling works, it's it's you you. It's, it's not as straightforward as um, ABA TV, but with, with, with time you can you can profile someone, wonder what they like, what their preferences, their favorite color. So you discover my nickname market when they were young. So try by all means not to divulge information to anyone. All right, let me give you another example of social profiling. Uh, now, nowadays there's a, there's a group of guys who are doing stock theft. They stopped running around market or rustlers or the still pigs or goats. They stopped moving around with trucks. What they do is they, they join a group of farmers. When they join a group of farmers, you guys, the, the farmers will be proud of their, their achievements and so of their head. Then they send pictures of their head. Then someone comes, claims, just says, ah, my, my friend, you've got a very nice farm. Where can I find you so that at least I see how well you're doing and how I can improve my farm? And when you give them the, your location, all they do is go there, scout, the, scout out your security perimeter and everything. Then they come and they steal your, 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 your kettle at night. So that's another form of social engineering. It's, so these guys, they are getting cleverer and cleverer in, in, in how they. They, they perform these tasks and they, they attack one. All right, let's, add a, let's go to other security features that we might need to, to tackle. We said fraud, we said um, malware, there's a lot that we need to cover. So I thought probably it may say you'd be rushed to say viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and whatnot, whatnot. We can still add to that. Phishing is another, and it's another threat. All right, so what is phishing? What's, when someone says phishing, is, it's, it's P-H-I. What's phishing, guys?
fishing. Yeah, it's sending of um, a spams on email, so it's, so as to get uh, person, person's information like uh, passwords and uh, passwords and the credit card numbers. Because at the end of the day, what 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 when when hackers uh, do these sorts of things, fifty percent of the time, in fact, sixty percent of the times, it's after something, a resource. It's very rare for someone to hack or do something just for pride. At times, it's, it's purposes of stealing. Uh, they want to steal money from you, so they send you a link. The, um, you, we have we have seen these links. They, Click this to win, uh, win maybe a car or something. You enter you enter your details and whatnot. So, so it's, it's it's out there. We've seen these things, and we've got masquerading attacks. Guys, I, I, these things we we. I thought this is one part aspect of this tutorial where we're just going to cruise. Cyber squatting, masquerading. Is it masquerading or masquerading? Whichever the case. I thought we were going to jump and talk about these things in Tato Pura, then we move on. But I see we're struggling. Ransomware for so those things. Yes. We know it, it, it was attacked. Is it 2014, 2015? And their yes. site was held ransom. They wanted someone. They wanted. They, they were asked to pay. Is it a thousand bitcoins or or mm -hmm. the site would go down, go there, would go back and whatnot. Then they took down the site. Then they had a disaster recovery plan, but it, it worked to some extent. But they were still attacked. Most of our systems they are very vulnerable, but just because. Those vulnerabilities are not being exploited. Does not mean those things. Those they they are secure. We know the case of bring your own device. You bring your own device to a system, then you go on the same network. The moment you're on the same network as an organization, it's vulnerable. Trojan horses. We know what Trojan horses. We know what spam. Is. I don't so know. Are, are we saying bring your own device? It's 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 a it's a security threat. No no no. Okay, the the best way to go about um um, um bring your own devices system and it is whereby you put what's called the DMZ demilitarized zone, where you 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 put everything that side so that it does not affect um the secure side of your network. If, if 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 let's say um, I go to a bank and the bank has Wi-Fi and that Wi-Fi is connected to, to to their server which holds account details and account passwords or something like that and I just bring my laptop to try and do a, 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 a to try and do uh, a transaction I can send packets to try and scan the open ports on every every machine that's there. When I when I when I get an IP address of server, if I get an open socket or an open port, it's vulnerable. I can exploit that that system using that open port. But I think what about the use of the group policy on 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 on, on that particular? If you use to uh, to actually restrict access to the sensitive data. Now, the question is, how would you restrict access to sensitive data? Because remember, I'm already on your network. Yes, uh, using the group policy objects where we are actually saying these actually these files are not are not uh, permitted to a certain user uh, who, acts, who actually log into the system. We can actually restrict where maybe you are using the HTTP or UDP protocols. So I don't know. It's 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 possible, and it remember remember my, my statement is there's nothing that's hundred and ten percent secure. 
you can all you can try and do is to make it as secure as possible okay but anyway let's 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 try and move on we've already used an hour i thought we'll be done with this presentation within the hour we have fishing we've got uh there's there, there's really a lot farming is another one yeah there's there's a lot and the type of perpetrators we've got hackers crackers what's the difference between a hacker and a crack All right, that's fine. Well, um, well, maybe for for acres, I, I know that there are the different type of acres where we'll be talking about the black head, where these guys are um, they are not bound with ethics. They 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 are not bound by ethics, but uh, for the white acres, of course, they 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 really comply with the with the with the, with the code of conduct in ethics. So these ones basically will be will be helping. The maybe organization to discover vulnerabilities on the system. What are what is the black cars? They are much concerned with money. When you're doing a vulnerability assessment, you need to they need to explicitly explain what you want. They want from you. If they don't, you can expose vulnerabilities that they didn't want to expose. So you sit down, you discuss. No, you guys. What we want is we have got um, Wi-Fi system that the people are bringing their own device. Uh, we've got a server, uh, a server, re, re, let's say pastel server. Check for us if it's vulnerable. And it, now you're restricted to just that. If they don't, you end up having to to <laughs> see things that are not meant for you. So that's where the white hackers come into play. There's 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 plenty that you can go about and beat these these um, types of perpetrators. But I'm a cyber terrorist. All right. So does cyber bullying count as a perpetration? Cyber bullying. Someone. Let's let me let me hear from Loki. Cyber bullying. Loki. Cyber bullying and trolling. Loki or Pearson Grant. All right, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, anyone to try and answer? Cyber bullying. Maybe, maybe we didn't get the uh, question. Okay. Is cyber bullying? legal is it ethical is it morally acceptable is cyber trolling ethical legal or morally acceptable cyber bullying is not is not ethical is not illegal in fact cyber bullying is illegal and it's not ethical and it's not more moral that's why there are some laws that prohibit that yeah, but how would you apprehend me if I'm bullying someone in Spain? Well, the, bu the bullying part, maybe it will come on the issue of maybe sharing negative information or sharing negative content about someone else. It means you'll be falsifying about the person's character and he can sue you for information of character. Okay, this is what right. I'm saying. Uh, I can, every picture that you send, I can come there and put a negative comment. I can go on your on your DM or Facebook, whatever it is, and start harassing you there. Yeah, I I think with the with the, with the with the advancement in technology, we will be talking about uh, maybe the the AIs. We are, we, are, we, are, we are able to detect uh, the bullying part. Okay. Because remember, this is something that is subjective. It depends on how you put it across. Uh, I'm no, say, 
I was joking with you. Bully. Come again, sir. Okay, I was just saying, I think cyberbullying is broad. I need to actually focus on a, one aspect. Okay. So there are some things which actually, which, which are actually clear that we've actually done in this conduct on a certain part and which does not need to be proved by uh, uh, anything, which is just, uh, and which cannot be contested once a person sues you for that. Can for you example, give us all right. Uh, I can say this issue uh, which was done by by Temba Muliswa on job appraisal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wait, I think you that saying, uh, you you stop stop, I, stop 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 being with people who are committed somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that cyberbullying? Yeah, because what it started, I think it just said on the issues of social platforms. That's where it started. So, 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 is there a difference between cyberbullying and deformation? Usually, deformation it comes. Uh, um, it, what comes first? It will be cyberbullying. Then, upon especially when you share negative information concerning a person or harmful content concerning a person or forceful information concerning a person that's why he sues you for defamation of character because all those characteristics they are, they are, comp they are comprised in cyberbullying all of that is still cyberbullying yeah so are we saying timber police were cyberbullied japanese yeah, in some sport, I think he does that. So, so, but did you, did you, did you, did you now, do you now notice why, why I was asking the difference between mm -hmm. deformation of character and cyberbullying? Remember, the, it's, it's subjective, it's from your own point of view. If September Muniso goes to court, he can simply say, No, you guys are simply giving the young men advice. But for someone, it's clear he was bullied. But for someone, for him, you can just come and say, I know you guys, I, I saw the error of this young man, so I was just correcting. I like him. But where, but the thing, it would be where he spoke about job praise, that's where it matters now. If you are correcting job praise, you, you should get maybe came to Japraiser privately and say you did A, B, C, D. But right now that you you, you rebuke Japraiser uh, on the, on front of almost everyone, that's where cyberbullying will came into play. But look at it this way. Yes, I, I, I agree. But look at it this way. Yes. You are now worried about the channel of communication. But we, we now moved away from the contents of what is communicated. And you, you're saying he, yeah. he, he, he should have gone to job praises. And Tim Bamleswa can go to court and say, yes, I should have gone to his, to his, to his, to his uh, uh, DM. But I wanted political, I wanted uh, to be seen like a role model, a father figure. So I wanted everyone to, to, I wanted this to be learned by everyone. So I put it there to, in, as a way of advising and encouraging our youngsters not to do, to not to, to, to meddle people that are committed. Um, so my point, my point is, um, type of bullying is subjective. There is no clear cut case where you say, no, 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 no. This is clearly bullying. Unless if someone comes mm -hmm. to you and say, ah, really? This one is ugly and you are fat and you, and you are short and dark and whatnot and whatnot. Those are clear insults. But if it's anything other than that, you get a situation where someone can defend themselves. All right. So now there's a difference between, there's a diff, now there's a term you put on cyber trolling. Cyber what? Trolling. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it. 
Mm, for me, it's my first time. I have never heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I can give it a try, say. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I can use uh, an example of entanglement. When Will Smith had uh, that little issue with his wife, and then people started uh, trolling him on social media when he was crying. So, for example, when um, there's a time when Arsenal was getting beaten. So, whenever Arsenal got lost, Whenever it's, Arsenal lost a match, people would then, uh, you know, uh, put uh, take a picture of Will Smith uh, seated on that round table where the where, where the information was disclosed that the wife was cheating. Then they they put then they dress him in an Arsenal jersey. Or whenever something something funny is is, is, is happening in the social circles of men, uh, people then use Will Smith's face, you know, and and and. And then put a statement. So, in my opinion, that's more or less an example of cyber trolling. Arsenal, by the way, it's still getting beaten. It isn't starting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but um, trolling could just be called online harassment. You are following someone and really making their life easy. You send pictures, you 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 send inflammatory posts. You, as long as that person's yes. life is vulnerable, we don't go to check check nine. Exactly. Maybe that's uh, the uh, the example that was given by Courage, Energy Press, and na 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 Timba Mlisa. That one can be cyber trolling. That that's not trolling. You know what a troll does, and it. I not tear a moon. Take take. If I'm your troll, I, I'm, I'm on your social media, I'm on your Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on your Twitter, I'm on your TikTok, I'm on your everything, passing negative comments. See now. Anyway, let's 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 let's, let's try and proceed. Uh, how about um, sorry to say this? Uh, how about pornography and child pornography? What's your take on those? It's 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 illegal all over. Child pornography. So so there there are areas of the internet called the dark dark web or dark net. Or the triple X. Yeah, you 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 get literally anything. And it's, it's, it's tricky because the moment you go there, <laughs> uh, there are hackers also. <laughs> they, they will exploit and attack your computer. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's the dark web is a double-edged sword. You can you can um, get useful code there, and you can get um, things that you bargain for. For example, you can get guns or drugs there. But the, the same people who sold you the drugs come back and steal the drugs from you. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can you can get um proprietary good proprietary software. You can get good proprietary gadgets that will help keep the system work. But <laughs> Same guys who gave you the system can still come back and steal it from you. <laughs> so it's, so it's, an, it's an area where we, I personally don't advise anyone to visit. There's a lot of unethical, illegal, immoral things that happen. So don't, 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 don't even Google, who can I cite like a dark page or something? Don't even pick that site. You are setting yourself for. For, for an attack. <laughs> like I said before, don't, don't think that's because you have not yet been attacked or safe. It simply means no one has exploited your vulnerability. Correct. Do, do you know if I, I, I gain access to your browser, I can gain access to your 
social media and your email. And if I gain access to your email, I can then gain access to your to your um, what's it called? Your banking details. If you're using online bank, and I can do transactions and pay by. Do you know that it's very possible? Yes, it's possible, sir. So, 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 just because it doesn't happen, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. No, that's okay. That's fine. I think we have talked a bit about about this. Now comes to something very intellectual proper. Intellectual property. I, 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 I will read. Intellectual property is a term used to describe works of mind, such as art, books, films, formulas, invention, music, and processes. These are distinct and owned by, owned or created by a single person or group. Intellectual property is protected through copyright, patents, security. That is the end of my tutorial. So, what's left for us now to do is to discuss what is intellectual, what is copyright, what are patents, what are trade secrets, and how does one differ from the other? And why is it important from, from the get go to have these patents or to have copyright acts? It's, it's for the floor, guys. Mongato Tarsa, this is the this is the last slide, and and to after this, we this is a uh, if we to talk about this, it would spend probably four hours talking about this, but we now need to space maybe a few minutes. Intellectual property. What do you understand by intellectual property? What do you understand by the word copyright? What do you understand by 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 patent? And there are some stuff, the words like corporate espionage that arise. How do they fit into all of that? And how is industrial espionage different from competitive advantage or industrial spying? Copyright. Okay. Right. Let's start with copyright. What's copyright? What? Okay. Let's start. What's the need for intellectual property? Well, on the issue of intellectual property, I think it is just a creation of the mind, which actually gives value to the business. Okay. Yeah. I can see so it's now. All right. I, I, I think it's just a way of protecting your way. I, I, I don't know much, but I think it's just a way of protecting your way. I created a formula to 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 an algorithm to, to solve um what's this for what's this problem for? Uh there's a challenge in mathematics whereby if you take a number that's between one and ten, and you multiply that number by three, by two, by three, and you divide that number, your result by two, it will, it will have an influence. And whatever the number that you get, it will end up to one, to zero rather. Is it one or zero? I'm not so sure. So that's a problem that mathematicians call. I've forgotten the name. You you multiply by you 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 add three and you divide by two. You add three and you divide by two. Or you multiply by three. I'm not so sure. So so that's a it's a common problem in people, which is the hasn't been solved. So if you manage to find an algorithm that solves that problem, and you want acknowledgement for it, you can have intellectual property for it because it's something that you and you want to pre if you want to send that algorithm you can use that so that at least 
um, you benefit from it. Remember, there's also something called, we'll talk about it, um, reverse engineering. Is it, is, it, is it whereby I'm saying is it someone built the formula for, for COVID? So I take the vaccine, I reverse engineer the vaccine, find out how it works, then recreate, re, re engineer that, that probably the same or something slightly different. So it, it could be, is that illegal or that's legal? That is legal. I think it's legal. It's legal. Yeah, I think so. You think so? All right. Uh, are we talking in Zimbabwean context or are we talking? I think Oh, using you someone's know. work, yeah. we're using yeah. someone's work without his consent, it's illegal. Using as, someone's work as long as it's intellectual property, it's yes, it's illegal. It's illegal. I think it's illegal. it would. I think it all depends on the type of protection here, which he has put in place on your property. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because actually, if he has put some uh, trade secrets on you on his intellectual property, it won't be legal. Uh, mm, we're now talking about trade, we, trade secrets. We, no, we still, we still, we still haven't gotten into copyright patents and trade secrets. Yes. We're still on intellectual property. property. We, we, yes, those are subcategories. But I want us to have an appreciation of what intellectual property is. All right. Uh, it's it's like this. Microsoft, your design at their software. Windows 10, Windows. One and Windows 11, aren't you? Yes. Is there? You, take that, you take that Windows 7, you re engineer it and you sell it. So it's, that's a real life example. Then you sell it. Microsoft can come to you and say, no, we 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 this is our property. All right. Another real life example. Do you know the guy who bought um who owns is it VW? Who owns what? VW. Okay. What did he do? He's a, he's a Chinese guy. I'm not so sure if it's VW or if it's odd between the two. The guy is based in China. This is what the guy did for, for him to, to grow. He bought a Mercedes Benz. He wanted to build cars. He bought a Mercedes Benz. He stripped it and put it back together. Then he used the same, more or less the same engine from the Mac to try and develop a car for China. It flopped. Then he took a Corolla. And he took a Mercedes Benz, a secret. He did the same thing. Then he built his first model of cars. He then started to expand. And it turns out these cars are only sold in China. And he's got probably the, uh, uh, from what the, 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 docu the, docu the documentary was saying, he's probably is the biggest. Because he owns either, I'm not so sure if it's Audi or VW. He owns that as well as a car company. I, I forgot the name. So then Mercedes came and said, ah, my guy, this car is identical to ours. When he was trying to export. But they don't have jurisdiction over Chinese money. So he is free to trade or build his cars in China but you can't export because, because of this intellectual property. It's, it's, just a, it's just an example whereby you see these things are coming to play. Uh, VW Doi accounts are those pin seatbelts. Seatbelt, you know, butter from your shoulder, you put it beside Paco, then the other pin in a side. 
they did not patent it. They actually gave it for free. Everyone to enjoy. So the discussion was they would have made more money by uh, making it an intellectual property. Everyone who uses it has to what? To pay. But they said for the greater good, it would be expensive, but we just want to make cars safe. So we're giving it out for everyone. Same applies with penicillin. It was discovered and everyone didn't put patent on it or intellectual property. They gave it for everyone. The formula for everyone. So let's proceed. Copyright. What is copyright? I think what copyright, is it is a copyright. I think it is the type of a protection which is put on on the um, uh, jobs done by an author like books, movies, uh, music, logo. And uh, usually, and usually the copyright, it stays forever in the lifetime of the author. Okay. Yeah. So, Agafa. In the middle. Uh, can you come again, sir? What, what if the owner dies? Uh, I'm not sure in Zimbabwe, but uh, another article which I read, it will be, it will last for the next 70 years after the author dies. It will be still be binding. All right. Um, do, I'll give you a very good example. You're very correct, but look at it this way. Um, okay. If you, Makambo, one of my movies, you guys have seen movies. If you discover at the end of the day, my songs are Nangari for Nangari for my movies. If the song is not original to that movie, it needs to be stated. And they probably might pay a fine or an acknowledgement to the owner of the song. Am I right or my mm -hmm. Yeah, another, example, another example, um, go to YouTube and take download that video on YouTube, put it on your website, you will be fined if the owner claims that and they can prove it is it's my video. So basically, it's just a means to protect your your, 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 to protect and to promote your, your works of art. How about, so if it's a painting, if I photocopy a painting, can I copy rights to yeah. the painting? Yeah, it's also the same as, uh, as well. So copyright is to do with art? Yes. Okay. So what would be infringement now? Infringement, that is when someone tries to to actually take that out of a person and try to and claim to be his or hers without the consent. Can you say the consent actually? No. Uh, just taking some other property and uh, trying to use it on your benefit, that would be an infringement. So, okay, that's good. Could we have this copy? Well, Muno Zimbabwe is not for good question of copyright. Ah, my copyright in the SFC review. I see. Good enough. It's my grammar record. Those, those office in Avon don't want to copy. Okay. So, 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 so I've got a question now. What happens now? I go to the copyright office. I want to have. It. A copyright to a song, but someone say, let's say, I get it on my chest or say, someone steals my chest with songs, then over a record, over a publication of songs before my chest. How, how, how would you handle I, I, I didn't hear you clearly on that one. Sir. Okay, you record your song, your album, you don't release those songs. I steal those songs. And I edit them. Pichana, 
Then I release those songs as mine. Okay. Yeah, I, that one is difficult because as long as you didn't uh, pro protect your, your your music in terms of the intellectual property or the copyright, that music won't be yours. That, that, that's unfortunate for on that part. Okay, so it's important to have copyright. Right? Yes. Was, uh, as long as... Um, on that note, I'm, I'm not sure. There is the issue of uh, this issue of common law to copyright, where uh, that law will start only be effective upon maybe the release of a certain thing, even though you didn't visit the corporate office. No, no, okay. This is what I'm okay. This is what I'm saying. My chess or reports didn't release someone steals those songs, then that someone releases those songs first. I think my chess will claim actually that there's another scenario which which actually happens like the one you are saying. Say. Mm. Uh, how 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 is he going to claim that is this is what I want to understand since he recorded and he, he kept it quiet and this guy now uh, records and uh, broadcasts that music. How will you say this is mature source music and this is this guy's music? How will you separate that according to law? It, it actually maybe depends on the other person who actually came in into the picture. Because if you take the issue of cyber squatting, I think we can actually try to link this scenario with the scenario of cyber squatting. But is cyber squatting illegal? It's what? <clears throat> is it illegal, cyber squatting? Yeah, it's a, in some scenarios, it's, it's a, an ethical. But legal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those who don't know what cyber squatting is, I've got a company called uh, Four Pens. And then someone goes and registers all possible combinations of Four Pens. So when I now want to create my own domain for a website, I can't create because it's already been registered. Then that mm -hmm. person comes up and tries to sell me. To, to, to be at a higher price. Mm -hmm. That's cyber squatting, right? Yes. yes. So, so my question is: Is that legal, or it's just unethical? I think, in some sense, it's, it's illegal. It's illegal. Well, you explain why you're saying it's illegal. Because I want to, well, you, you, the reason. Hello? Yes, yes, proceed, sir. Okay, I'm saying the reason why I might say it is illegal is because you, you'll you be actually targeting maybe my, in some in some scenarios, you'll be targeting my, my prominent firms, which you know actually they are gaining popularity maybe in the market, but they not yet taken a step of uh, registering their domain, then you make, an, you make a counter for them, knowing that one day they will come actually demanding for maybe to buy back that, uh, that domain from you. Because as for you, your, your intention will be, sometimes you might not be using the domain at the moment, but you are only waiting for them to come and uh, say ah it's okay we need to buy this thing from you then you actually pay an exorbitant fee so to me it's actually a certain of uh, fraud like but, but you guys what what is fraud <laughs> what, what is fraud uh, uh fraud i think um, how best, how best can I describe this thing, this animal? It was private. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a criminal. Uh, you can say it, it, it's a criminal, what? All right. At the end of the day, 
fraud, there's an element of criminal deception. Ruda will be Ram, yes, Ramurovi, but Ruda Mushan Srapu, Wakuti, Kumunyangeza, for them to surrender willingly their, their, their property or whatever it is. So, back to our argument, debate rather. We are, we want to find out if cyber squatting is legal or it's just unethical. Because remember, this person is not misrepresenting anything. His cards are on the table. I bought this. It's like this. I go to a shop. There are maybe four, four loaves of bread. I buy all four loaves of bread. Then I stand outside. I buy them maybe a dollar and I sell them at three dollars. That is called business. Business. But business in the same Yes, proceed, sir. You actually have your target. Your what? You actually have a target. Maybe I need the, the, this Marufu who is doing a business of, of maybe selling my, 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 my detergent, my, my toilet detergents. Then you say, ah, this guy is actually growing up in the business. Therefore, you counter him. Go to the domain registry. You register all possible combinations associated with the Marufu's business. Then you know when Marufu goes to the domain registration, you actually find all these things taken. So you are, you are actually misrepresenting. All right. How different is it from this situation? I know you you are you work at Coco and it you 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 are the owner of Coco. You need pork and it, mm -hmm. you need pig. Then I go and collect all the pigs in maybe Zarabani or Harare region and sell them to you. How is that different? If it is only the if it is the only way where you you where Koko is buying pork, I don't well, think. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's not forget <laughs> some. There is the yes. business business is is a brutal area. It's yeah. all concerned. It's concerned with making profits. So, however you make profits, this is how. This is how. Take for example, what's it called? Uh, Shumba. Those matches. They had a factory. Is it light on there? Yes, light that light on. produced match, match, match boxes. But it was cheaper to import them than make them here. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they ended up to they ended up having to import. So they minimize their costs by importing and still provide more or less the same to save service. Uh, yeah, so it's tricky, it's tricky, it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I personally think cyber squatting is not illegal. I think it's just unethical. It's like an going, uh, you know, it's like yes, going it's to buy but cybers. I know, Say, I know cyber, you cyber squat, squatting is illegal. Illegal. Yes, it's illegal. It, uh, maybe we, I can accept. Maybe let's say, like your company, you don't have, you don't have a trademark on a company, and then I use, I use that domain. Yeah, it can be legal. But as long as you have uh, a trademark for your company and you have, you had already created a goodwill for customers, then I use that uh, squat sub squatting. Then it's illegal. Uh, Saga, are you giving us? Yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, your your volume uh, is a bit low. What I, I think is actually illegal in cyber squatting. Okay. Yeah, cause it is an authorized registration. Correct. Yeah. So if it is an authorized registration, then it becomes illegal. Who is authorized? Who authorizes the registration of domains? Uh, because uh, when, 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 uh, if if I give you authority to drive my car, uh, I will give you yeah, authority. But when uh, uh, when you find your car being driven by someone. Would you say I? You can go and claim, but I didn't give him authority. Remember, you didn't have uh, any, 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 any copyright. 
or, or any intellectual property to for your name. Okay. So you, it's difficult for you to okay. say. Uh, uh, number one today. When you have it. Uh, okay. Uh, the issue. Uh, I was the one who was there yesterday with uh, Mr. Moy. Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. But but it's it's okay. You can you you can counter sue or do whatever it is that you want to 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 get your your domain. But I I personally think it's just good business. But again, okay, it also depends with how how you go about it. If I register the domains and just keep them there, uh, I think it's fair and fine. But now uh, after your company is registered, then I counter register maybe. Facebook, dotting with Facebook, you know, one or the intentions of that now becomes uh, somewhat illegal. The intentions. Yeah, because, because let's look on this side, say. Uh, in most cases, the, the, the actual, there are some obvious reasons why most people do does this thing of cyber squatting. And uh, the other one, maybe you have actually seen, ah, you've, you've seen your, your domain name has been taken already. Then maybe you just do a search on that on that domain name. Then you actually, oh, there is actually a, a website which is up and running, but which is same as almost identical products, same as mine. That now is not cyber squatting now. Are reasons of cyber squatting? No, no, no. That that is more of a, of a, um, what's that attack called? Masquerading. I'm going around telling people that I am I am David on my on, on the internet. I'm not on David. the internet. You 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 have got a company called ABC Options. I register my domain called the DC options and I put a site there. And it, the moment I put there as my site there, I'll be masquerading as ABC. So that's masquerading. Cyber squatting is okay. where I, I register all domains and, 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 and try to sell them to make a profit. Registering a domain is very cheap. But because you need that domain, you end up having to 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 our hold that name a transfer because you know if you don't buy that name i can create a website and masquerade as you all right okay don't need any bigger organize like i said before it it depends with how you structure your your, your response yeah, I think I need to do an in-depth study on that. So, so no, no, no. It's, it it depends. If if you are able to defend, no problem. And they will and they will, yeah. will you be so easy to to convince? Maybe it's okay to convince. Ask Pearson. Pearson, am I very difficult to convince? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so let's move on to page. What what what, okay. what are patents? Patents. Patents, patents. patents actually uh, another way of protecting an IP, but on a but usually it is protected on a limited time, maybe up to twenty years. It's got a time frame. Yeah, it's a limited time frame. Yeah, so up to twenty only, years. Is that the only difference? Because remember, Pepe, we're talking of art. So now I don't think we'll be talking of art. Yeah. You, on pattern, we'll be talking about new inventions, actually. That's now property. Yeah. And, uh, you, and that design uh, uh, a machine that can cut people's hair. I can patent it. So anyone who's seen making something similar.
Yeah, for yeah, I think for for an exam which is just close home a bit, a, a patent on Tesla electric cars. He put actually a patent on his cars on on his electric cars, in which he actually maybe last late last year he dropped the patent and he became an open source to anyone. For for the design of the car or the batteries. On the design of what? For the design of the cars or the bat. On, uh, on the design of the cars, of electric cars, actually. I don't know no. would, would the model be on the issue of batteries or what. Because the, the, the issue, the reason why those cars are slightly faster is because, number one, they've got a very low center of gravity. The batteries are not on the roof or the back. The, the batteries, on the, especially on the Model X, they're on the floor. So, for okay. you, you, you don't have to take them apart. All right. So, so and also, you, remember, there's a, he's not the first person to build an electric car, but he's just the first person to actually commercialize building an electric car. Toyota was was investing, was researching on the use of these things for a very long time. That's how you discovered they made hybrids. Those um, Honda has got hybrids. Toyota has hybrids. You can get a BMW BMW X6 as hybrid. So they were working towards a fully green car. But Tesla is the first one that actually commercialized it. So probably it was ideal for them to patent it. But by virtue of him being now a billionaire, he doesn't need money anymore. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that guy is now super. Rich. Nah, he's now ah, uh, he's now ah, uh, he's now super. Rich. He's now super. Rich. Anyway, so so we're saying, uh, patents they've got a time period, which is lesser than copyright acts, and patents is now inventions and properties. If you have got an invention, you can you can you can um. You can put it there. Uh, on, on, on the PDF that I gave, we've got IBM, Samsung, Canon, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. They, they have got patents on, on that. Put. You can patent anything that is just the original work. You can even patent formulas. Huh? Yeah. So, so it, it patents. So, okay, now my question is: Is software copyright or patents? Uh, it's copyrighted. Why are you saying copyright? Because you said we, from the definition that we gave, uh, copyrights are given to works of art and software. Yeah, actually, software software is actually a creation of the mind. Is actually art on its own because software is unique. It's actually, mm. and it actually evolves from maybe of at any given time. Then by that I, I can actually make say it can actually be copyrighted. So if I reverse engineer your software and add something slightly or maybe change change an icon. Would that be legal, illegal, moral, or unethical? Uh, on the software, on the software, on the software. Ah, it actually be tricky. It's legal. Farai. It actually, it, it, it actually depends. Maybe if you actually maybe have the same using the same maybe the same way of designing things. Even though you change a little bit of, even if you change a little bit of things, but maybe you, you are using the same colors like the one you, you was using, or maybe you're using the same logo or what trademarks, all those things. Does it yeah, you can actually, it becomes illegal? Hello? Does it not depend on what you patent? Yeah, it actually depends. Because let's suppose I've got, I've got, uh, let's say, uh, let's give an, an example of Microsoft. Microsoft painted the operating system, but they can, they can, 
they might have the operating system and they can just take probably the graphical user interface. And don't do chance that they are user interface, which would not be patented. Yeah, like what you said, say I would I would actually agree to say these things sometimes are subjective. So it can be legal. My trade secrets actually, uh, those are also, it's another part, it's another way of protecting an intellectual property, but. Uh, the major difference with other things is that in intellectual property, the secret has been put in actual place. It can actually last forever. And there are some certain precautions which are put to protect that property, like you sign, like you make people sign, you know, what you call a non disclosure non agreement. All right. So, what are we saying trade secrets are? Okay, um, and the trade secrets was defined as business information that represents something of economic value. Exactly. Yes, in this So, can we have an example probably of a trade secret? This one Coca is the Coca Cola. Coca Cola, the ingredients to do the Coke is kept a secret. That formula, did it? That formula, yes. It is claimed that the president is the only one who's got that secret. And mm -hmm. the president, after he retires or is resigned or is fired, he is not allowed to work anywhere else again so as to protect. That formula. Yes. So they take it. They take. You know, Coke. The, the history says says Coke was started probably fifty three crates a, a year. Now it's a con conglomerate. So that formula did them wonders. Yeah. Okay. Um. So so we're saying. Trade secrets, it's business value. Yes. Copyright, works of art, patents, and inventions. Yes. Where do mathematical formulas come in? I've discovered an algorithm. Do I patent it, or it's a trade secret, or it's. Um... But I've, I've found a, a, a formula to solve the chaos. Uh, okay, so I think it depends. It depends. It, it, cause it, it, now you understand when you're dealing with yeah. this, nothing is written in stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as you justify your answer, I am all right with that. Okay. Yeah, dramatic. So, so if you can say it's up to you to say no, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a trade secret because I'll make profit from it. Number one, you can say ah, it's an intellectual property because it's 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 a copyright. It's it's my work of art, and someone says ah, no, this is my invention. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 it, 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 it comes back to to how you structure it. We we have officially. We reached the uh, fact that we are at the two-hour mark, but I feel we need to talk about plagiarism. Yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Plagiarism. Hey, what did we? Jamai told you, hey, what you're saying, what you're writing is plagiarized. You need to have a certain level, percentage of acceptable plagiarism. What, what, what is plagiarism? 
plagiarism against it is taking one work putting in your own and failing to acknowledge the 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 author of the work you have copied and it is actually seen in academia as we plagiarism is not found and and assume and not acknowledging that it is mm -hmm. because in academia the way the moment you write something and you don't acknowledge we are assuming that that work is now yours this is why in academia they publish so if a paper is published they would they have actually uh, put uh, intellectual property no this thing is mine so when you write something and fail to acknowledge it, it's, 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 it's somewhat, um, it's, it's not legal. It's not illegal and unethical for you to do it. You, so it's, like, it's just a way of also respecting that the works. That is a uh, plagiarism. What, what uh, you, you reference or you cite? You whether you use the Harvard style or upper site depends with how you want to to go out, but you need you need to acknowledge. No, I hope it's from for Wikipedia is not uh, an academic site. You cannot you cannot uh, quote Wikipedia because I can put anything on it. Mr. Tingo. Hey. Yeah, you age to age. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this marks uh, the end of our our tutorial. I I, will, I recorded this and I will put it on 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 my vista so that all of you can the people who were not here could also benefit. Um.